friends, buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I really wanted to get out of the house and also away from crowds and traffic and noise. And so I decided to come here to the Borghese Gardens. If you live in the city and you want a little bit of nature, you have to go to the parks. And here in Rome, the Borghese Gardens is probably one of the most popular parks. So I just wanted to walk you around some of the gardens and also um, I'm going to explore some of the Tridente neighborhood which is right here with Piazza del Popolo and also I'm going to go over to the Spanish steps. So let's get into the video. Walking around right now, I'm reminded of my first time ever in the Borghese Gardens. It was my first time in Rome and I was staying in a hotel that's right near here. So I would um, come here and journal and I remember I was sitting on a bench like my last night here journaling and kind of crying because I didn't want to leave. And I remember a guy was like cycling and he saw me on the bench and like did a full u-turn and came around and sat next to me and we were just talking and I was super naive back then and like in America I never get attention for how I look but in Italy I found my first time here I got so much attention <laughs> and um, he like at one point grabbed my head and pulled me in to kiss me and I was so freaked out by that that I like got I pushed him off and got up and had to like run away screaming no in the middle of <laughs> the park and it's just kind of like a funny memory because uh, I just didn't know what to do in that moment and um, like if I could watch myself just like run away from this guy screaming no. Another memory I have here is in 2017 my brother and I were here in Rome in August. It was so hot and for some reason he always wanted to go on jogs during the middle of the freaking day and we would come here to the Borghese Gardens and run around and it was so hot. He would like take off his shirt and basically uh, jump in the fountains every time he saw them. Just to clarify, I mean these fountains, not like this. I remember we came to this area and it was it's a nice memory now, but at the time it was like ridiculously hot and I hated every second of it. But I love walking through here. There's a lot of memories that are brought up about my first time here in Rome or you know, at different points in my life I've been here and I've walked through these gardens and it's it's nice to just be reminded and uh, be back here. So I'm having a lot of fun today. why I'm always including churches in my videos it's because I love art and I love finding things to do for free and in Rome that's a great thing to do for free and you get to see beautiful art from 
really famous people. So here in Piazza del Popolo, there's some beautiful churches and there's one in particular with Caravaggio paintings, Bernini sculptures, and works by Pinturicchio. So I'm going to go down there now and take you inside. I think there's some kind of event right now in the city because the piazza looked to be gated off. So I don't know if I can like walk around or film much of that, but let's go down and check it out. To be honest, I walked around without doing much research beforehand because I just wanted to relax, but this church definitely deserves an actual tour because there are so many details to pay attention to. Santa Maria del Popolo is one of the most significant buildings of the Roman Renaissance, not only for its architectural features, but also for the paintings and sculptures that it houses. It's one of Rome's earliest and richest Renaissance churches, and the church contains works by several famous artists such as Raphael, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, Caravaggio, Pintoricchio, and more. It houses Rome's oldest stained glass windows and has long been a favorite church of popes over the centuries. Oh, non funziona? Okay, <laughs> that's you. These masterpieces by Caravaggio, the crucifixion of St. Peter made around 1601, and the conversion of St. Paul around the same time. The two paintings, painted in oil, were commissioned to Caravaggio in September 1600 by the owner of the chapel. And I actually studied these in my art history class in university, and it's just amazing to me that I can waltz inside a church whenever I want to see them. Almost for free. <laughs> I had to pay two euros to light it up. But anyway, this church is definitely, definitely worth a visit. I'm here in Piazza del Popolo and uh, this piazza was originally laid out in 1538 to provide a grand entrance to Rome's northern gateway. It's been remodeled several times and that obelisk was brought here by Augustus from ancient Egypt. Originally they put it in Circo Massimo but later they moved it here. Now I'm going to walk you down a street called Via Marcuta. It is a street that's very popular. Uh, it has a reputation for being very arty. There was a gallery here, uh, number 54, where the futurists held their first meeting. And Picasso met his wife, Olga. And also there is the home of Federico Fellini, where he lived in until he died in 1993. I've actually never walked down this street. It's kind of tucked away. It's like a side street, so I'm curious to see what it looks like. I think there are like art shops, galleries, studios, things like that. So let's go check it out. This neighborhood is really stylish. There's like designer shops everywhere and I never feel like I belong here because here I am wearing like 
leggings as pants and uh, <laughs> I'm not fancy at all. One last thing before I get going. I wanted to show you the really old photos of Rome and then the photos now, but because the piazza is um, blocked off, I don't think I can stand in the exact spot. So I'll show you some pictures and then the footage that I can get but it's not gonna be exactly the right spot, but I think um, it's still interesting to see what it used to look like. So I'll show you those now. steps you'll see this fountain of a sinking boat. It is the Barcaccia from 1627. It is believed to be by Pietro Bernini, the father of Gian Lorenzo Bernini. The water is from the Aqua Virgine Aqueduct, which is an aqueduct that is still functioning today and feeds the Trevi Fountain and many other fountains in this area. The Barberini family commissioned this fountain.
This street, Via Condotti, is Rome's most exclusive shopping street. And like I said, I'm not very fancy and I don't really care about shopping that much. I do like to admire it from the windows, but honestly, I can never even afford these kind of clothes. So if you're into that now, you know this is the street you want to come to. Cafe Greco was a favorite meeting point of the 18th and 19th century writers. It opened in 1760 and it's still similar to how it was back then with the penguin waiters and those fancy gilt mirrors. Forgive me if I pronounce some of these wrong, but Casanova, Goethe, Wagner, Keats, Byron, Shelley, and Baudelaire were all once regulars here. This bar can be an expensive one nowadays, but it's a nice experience stepping back in time and enjoying your day in a really beautiful part of Rome. Alright guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao tutti!